Why the hell would anyone want to wear bike sandals? In this video, I'm going to run through the negatives and the positives. The negatives issues are dorkiness, availability, sizing, sunburn, and hot foot. The positives, simplicity, avoiding problems with swelling on long rides, and not having to deal with wet shoes and socks when it rains. I guess many people are worried about looking like a dork, so I'd better start with that first. Yes, they do look dorky. But if you wear Lycra, you already look like a dork to 95% of the population. If you cycle in normal clothes, just the fact that you're on a bike makes you look like a totally weird dork to that same 95% of the population. So just get over it. As the saying goes, in for a penny, in for a pound. Now, availability. I had a really tough time buying a pair two years ago, and by the looks of things, it hasn't gotten any better. This website has them available so long as you're size 47 to 48. Many bike shops and internet stores seem to have a really hard time stocking them. I had to order mine, and I'd forgotten all about the order when I got an email sometime later to say that a pair had come in. I bought them, and when they were delivered, I hit the next problem, sizing. I like Shimano shoes because I have wide feet, and I need a double E shoe. Only Shimano seems to sell reasonably priced footwear for those of us with fat feet. Note that I said reasonably priced. I'm sure I could get shoes elsewhere if I was willing to cough up a thousand dollars. When I ordered the sandals, I looked at the size tag in my Shimano MTB shoes and ordered the same size sandals. I figured that coming from the same company, they'd be using the same sizing templates. Well, whilst they look about the same size when lined up together, you can see there is a huge gap between my toes and the front of the sandal. This has never caused me any problems though, but just be aware of this issue. Plus, they also make you a lot tastier as far as dogs are concerned. I made that last bit up. On to sunburnt feet. I haven't suffered from it yet, mainly because I ride early, but it is a risk. I do have some pretty interesting tan lines on my feet though. Hot foot is the biggest problem, and by that, I mean developing a hot spot on long rides right where the cleat is located. On my first ride, I got hot foot within the first five kilometers. As the sandals shaped themselves to my feet on subsequent rides, that distance slowly grew until I can now do about 40 kilometers without any major problems. But you certainly get a bit of discomfort from time to time. I believe this is due to the base being much more flexible than your standard MTB shoe, and certainly heaps more flexible than your average very stiff road bike shoe. The other factor is that you don't have something like an inner sole or an orthotic under your foot. The good thing about an orthotic is it does more than just position your foot properly. It also ensures that the entire sole of your foot is pressing evenly downwards. It helps to spread the load. The sandals are crap at load distribution. But then again, they're not, distri they're not designed for pushing 400 watts. They're designed for more casual use. I met a bloke recently who makes customised orthotics. The kind used by people with one leg much shorter than the other. I jokingly suggested that I should super glue some orthotics under my sandals, and to my great surprise, he told me that was an excellent idea and that I should definitely do it. He gave me a long technical explanation based on levers, but he was definitely for it. That's all the bad things out of the way. The first good thing is that they make cycling simpler, particularly for short trips like zipping down to the shops or fooling around with the kids in the park. Late last year, I bought what I call my shopper commuter bike and I fitted combination pedals to it. They're SPD on one side and flat on the other. The idea is that I can use the flat pedals in any footwear, but so far I haven't used them because in warm weather it's just as easy to hop into the sandals. Winter will be a different story, but for now the flat sides remain unused. The next good thing is that I never suffer from swollen feet on long rides. When wearing road or MTB shoes, I lose feeling in my little toes after about 60 kilometers or so. Like I said, I've got very wide feet, and even the double E width MTB shoes aren't a complete solution. I've ridden 100 kilometers in the sandals and had zero issues with swelling. However, I did have issues with hot spots, so there's a trade-off. I find the hot spots are easier to deal with than the swelling, but your mileage may differ. The best thing, however, is dealing with warm summer rain. I commute to and from work, and one thing I really, really hate at the end of the day is pulling on dripping wet shoes and socks. They're cold and clammy and just downright disgusting. We don't have a drying room at work, 
so there is no way to dry your shoes during the day. You just have to suffer. However, if you're wearing sandals, well, pff, there's no problems at all. For starters, there are no socks to worry about. And secondly, they dry out very rapidly because they're open and don't have inner soles, etc. In fact, riding through deep puddles is not bad at all, so long as you like the feeling of water running between your toes. I reckon I can wear them for about eight months of the year in Sydney. There is no way I'd wear them in winter though. My toes would freeze off in no time. I decide whether to wear them or not based on the temperature when I leave home in the morning. If it's around 14 to 15 degrees, they're fine. Any the lower than that, and you risk losing feeling in your toes due to wind chill, particularly if it's a bit damp. So if you're commuting and you have cleats but aren't taking riding too seriously, I suggest you give them a go. The more people who start wearing them, the less dorky I'll feel.